Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. <laughs> Radiant team ban. Welcome back, everybody. Here's your coverage of the Epicenter Online Qualifiers. As we are going in uh, to our second series of the night. A little concerned that I see that from Waga. Waga, can you actually... Let me let me just see if your mic Yo. works. Hi. Yo. Hi. It's all clear? I can hear you. It's good now? I can hear you. I just need to go into Dota and uh, mute you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't don't have me on in there. That's, uh, yeah. I, I take care of all the Dota TV from this side of the fence. Uh, but yeah, welcome, Waga. Obviously, you're an upgrade from Moon. Less memes, more quality. Uh, I was actually listening to your cast. Um, last game was kind of sad for us, Iron Zero. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Moon was kind of pointing that one out. It's just like, yeah, this game is not going to end well. <laughs> uh, he said it pretty early. That science to turn into a support. It was uh, quite <laughs> terrible. And OD, even though he gets shut down, he had like 3 CS against 18 on mid lane, I think you said, and then, uh -huh. then you saw it, the Ostfrog return. This, this, is, this is like why, like, I was bringing it up, and I, I love the fact that Danish Bears are playing our second series the night after we had like that OD discussion. Because Danish Bears are the only team I know of right now who are running the first pick Alchemist. Team pick. Yeah. I don't know. It's a strange, it's a strange thing in this patch. To be honest, it's uh, it's not something that makes a lot of sense to me. But you can make a lot of things work in this patch, even though there are some OP things. <laughs> so, dude, I, after watching that Alchemist played uh, in their lower bracket round one matchup, I, yeah, holy crap, <laughs> it's so good. It's unbelievable uh, how good. Like, it's straight armor. It's straight armor Alchemist they built. Yeah, of course. Like, if you go Armlets, Blink, and Solar Crest, you can do tons of damage, and it's just a good fighting build. Mm -hmm. And then you can go into, like, some carry items later on. So I think that's the only way you can play him right now. You can't go for a Radiance Rush. You're gonna get so punished by all the heroes. Yeah. But, we, um... we saw the Radiance Rush actually being punished uh, just oh, really? yesterday. Uh, it uh, was London Conspiracy, uh, Baby Knight, and the boys. And they can't do that in this like, patch. Then they tried to go a Radiance Rush on a mid Broodmother. Oh, on Brute? <laughs> yeah, it, but it's it's his thing. It's his thing. He goes, he normally goes for the Radiance into Scotty. I swear it's not a thing. <laughs> it's it's his thing. It's his thing. He ended up winning like five games in a row with it, and then it got banned out for a long period of time. They try to use it again after the patches happened, and it just doesn't function. Like the flash farming you're expecting to get from the Radiance just doesn't work. But it was it was hilarious. Like it was like I think it was nine one on the on the kill board. In favor yeah. of uh, the mid brood team, and they still lost. Yeah, well, the thing I feel if you go Radiance, you're just gonna have to always be revealed, right? You're gonna farm creep waves with your hero, but I don't think you need to do this with Broodmother much at all. You can just get the Spiraling Army, they can farm for you. Your flash farm comes from pushing down towers and just farming the camps with fighters. <laughs> I think you put yourself in danger, and you don't have any chance of really killing people if they have uh, stunts or just some teamwork. That's why you need the orchid. I understand I don't that completely. That game, we, I complete agreement with you. You know, uh, you know what I'm hoping for, though, Toby? Oh, uh, because apart, I know uh, from Meepo. <laughs> no, that's exactly the hero I'm hoping for. <laughs> Because Ace plays that hero quite a bit. I know you're still like. Last, do you still believe uh, that hero is good enough to to play right uh, now? I think he's bad currently, Vegas but Ace has had pretty good success with him uh, from spamming him like 30 games in a row or in pub or something. And I, I just think he's not good either in pub or competitively right now. He's better in actually captain's mode than in like pubs. So you want to see it being played just so Vega can beat them? Oh, is, is that what you're saying? Well, <laughs> No, no, no. I, I don't. I don't think he's hard Radiant to beat at all. That's why I want to see it be played because they would have to play good to pull it off. You know. Ah, uh, it would I, be exciting. I, I see. I see. So you try. And to, I, you I try believe to in do my, the uh... run after actually breaking both your legs, and mm -hmm. if you do Pretty complete much. the run, you get props for it. Pretty much. Well, the Ten thing is, Meepo just after the respawn nerf, 
you really turn to Five shit. I mean, <laughs> well, what do you do? You get so much <laughs> levels, you die once, and then you're dead for like one and a half minutes, and Radio you're like, oh, I think I leveled so fast, guys. <laughs> you just, he struggles from that department. Uh, I guess if you never die, you don't run into that problem, right? Yeah, that's a uh, good solution is prevention. Hmm. All right, so we're, we're, we're pretty much going through this draft Radiant nice and quick. Team. Vega looked pretty standard, apart from maybe the Night Stalker the, first pickup. The third pick Invoker is kind of non-standard. Yeah, yeah if, if, if we switch the Night Stalker and the Invoker around, that everything feels a little bit better for Vega, because yep. they, yep. they are continuously running the Night Stalker these days. The Danish oh, yeah. Bears with the first two pickup of Spirit Breaker. Mm. Like, there's, there's got to be some kind of mindset behind this. Because you know well, when you pick it up like then, you're going to lose your Darkseer. You're going to lose like that instant combo with Iron Shell. True. Well, they could go for something like that. I just think Spirit Breaker and Iron Shell on the off lane together can punish a lot of lanes. Like greedy safe laners. So we'll see if Vega decide to go greedy or not. Um, but, I don't know. Spirit Breaker is not being played that much recently and I think for good reason. He does work well against Fear End though. I mean, you can always punish this hero. True. Mm. Kiel gets snagged up. Maybe, maybe that hero. is just like the, the core reason why he's picked. So you can track down that profit no matter what. If, if you can get Baker into that position, where, like where PL is beating around like his illusions, he gets Ten Manta, seconds, he's pushing out the side lanes really nicely. The profit has to defensively Five counter push. Seconds, you probably can win that side lane kind of battle when profit just has to play so defensive because of the SP. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. Right now, you gotta get to that position first. Right now, I'm kind of scared for uh, Danish Bears, though, because, I mean, they're up against Nature's Prophet Invoker. There's so much synergy between these two areas. Not only do you have global push, um, global uh, punishment from the, of course, Fury and TP in, the ulti, and just Sunstrike, of course, mm -hmm. but then you have the pushing power as well, which is quite tremendous. And if Night Stalker takes map control, I mean, that can get ugly real quick if he gets agonims do you actually so, want to see a cost exhort invoker in this game spirit. um yeah i would Radio i actually Team like quas exhort invoker so much more now with the ember pick though maybe it could go quas wex but uh i think quas exhort is so much better the, the only Just... only thing i'm thinking of is like obviously you got your call sent to stop the spirit breaker when he first charges in yep but is it going to be worthwhile having some more team fight control? Because the damage output's nice, but the team fight control is still iffy for the moment until we see their That's second true. support. You don't have so good team fight control with a classic sword early on, but you flash farm so well, and you can farm jungle, you can push out lanes with force spirits. Five Whenever you feel that lane is not safe, you just send the spirits there, and they're going to push for you. So you, you can apply this Reserve this time. pressure on every lane between Nature's Prophet and Invoker. I think if you go Quaswex, you have to succeed in every gank and every team fight. You have to win, or you're just gonna suddenly fall Radio behind because you have no real farming. And I, I don't know, it, it's more risky to me playing Quaswex. Alright, so we're running an offlane Spirit Breaker with the pickup of the Oracle. Yeah. Leaves uh, Danish Bears mid is the only question mark left. That's true. I, I'm still thinking. Oh, they have quite a few options actually. They can go for there. There are a few heroes that do well against Invoker on mid if they. You could just put the PL mid. Like that's that's the MVP yeah. way, right? It's not even the MVP way anymore. Everyone is adopting that. It's being done a lot. Okay, like the, the way that everyone pops, people just MVP? pick PL and go mid every time now. <laughs> yeah. And it's uh, it's very good against Invoker. It's easy to gank for as well. So Spirit Breaker can always come in because the lands really hurts. And you have mana to spam it so many times. Um, what are you going to Vega also want to switch up their lanes? Like, do you have to put the Invoker in mid? You can push the Ember Spirit with the PMS against the PL? Well, I think they put Invoker mid no matter what, Five actually. If they put remaining. Ember mid, oh, that doesn't really like, make sense to me. Yeah, you put Ember mid and Invoker, Invoker safe Reserve lane with time. Exhort. Yeah, they, they could do that. Like, good old safe lane Invoker farming up. But uh, I don't remaining. think it's... I don't think it's the way here. Vega don't think it's the way. You just pick. gotta find a way to beat this PL. Radiant you don't have great heroes for ganking him either. It's like when nighttime comes, they can go and silence him. That's the only way. Interesting ban from Ace is the last one. Like the bane would make sense if you're looking for setups and great control to well, like, synergize with the Invoker. They, they, they didn't have the anything against high. the Enchantress. They rate the bane very high as well in Danish Bears. You should keep that in mind because uh, Rise plays it a lot, and they just run. That's one of their most picked heroes. 
So maybe it's just that they feel, oh, we know how good this is, and it would be good for them here, you know? They ever get a um, Fiend script off? Who can really stop it? It's Spirit Breaker only so far, right? Legion so Commander. if he Fiend scripts the PL. Wow! <laughs> Legion Commander! Alright! I love it! Manliest of good. the ladies in, in the uh, Dota 2 world. Hey, she can do pretty well on the safe lane against Nature's Prophet. Because uh, she can proc her retaliation all the time. Yeah. I'm, the, I'm liking uh, her as a, like a good controller against the Amber Spirit too. Because they didn't have any real lockdown against the Amber, and we don't really want to count Spirit Breaker for that. Uh, but having Duel available, she can start feeding off the Crystal Maiden if you can catch her out with Duel. So increase up that damage. And you should always be able to win the Duel, right? Because you got an Oracle. Good Noriko mm. behind you that can just like give you like invulnerability for a short period of time. That's true. You uh, you also double the heal from the procs all the time, so it's very unlikely that Legion dies at the end of it. Even though she might take some brave duels. Five seconds. Yeah, it, it's just hard to duel the important targets because both the Invoker and the Ember Spirit can be quite elusive, especially later on when they have items. Uh, you need to get. Oh, actually, what do you even get in this game for her? Because like, you can go for an early blink dagger, but would that actually even be enough? Would it be worthwhile going for something like a Shadow Blade, for example? On Legion Commander? Yeah. Uh, I think Shadow Blade can very often be good. Blink dagger is like a more clean initiation, <laughs> but Shadow Blade, since they don't have any other invis hero, it can be good to just force the enemy team to buy more sentries. It kind of starves their supports more. But, I mean, you don't want to rely fully on it, because if they uh, Night Stalker does get gem and Aghanims, Shadow Blade is terrible so you might need both go shadow blade you go back for a blink as well or it's just the control factor so so rise can just throw impetus after impetus and kill off everyone he wants to because that's true they do have a combo there as well they can uh, use the leading commander to press the attack the enchantress it's gonna hurt oh yeah that's actually that's quite nice 120 bonus attack speed impetus <laughs> yeah Actually, how, how hard can you make her attack if you go for like Dragon Lance into Mask of Madness and then you press the attack on her as well? Oh, quite hard. I, I don't think you go Mask of Madness. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had it. Unless like, you're Sing Sing. I, it was, I think it was Ryze who actually did it in the, in the semi final match. Oh, really? Yeah, and I should very actually nice. correct myself on that too. I said they actually came from the lower bracket at the very start of this. Uh, they actually came through and they uh, they were the team that 2 1 Navi just before the Dota Pit Land final. Uh, and they were 2 one by Power Rangers, but that game was one of the clowniest games I think I have cast in a very, very, very long time. That's very nice. Uh... <laughs> the, yeah... You like clowns, don't we? I, I'm not a clown fan. I'm not a no? clown fan. Uh, I'm not scared of clowns, but I'm not a clown fan. Alright. Well... I'm looking forward to this game. I want to see how much damage the Legion Commander adds. With oh, well, she's actually are they actually just sending the Legion Commander off me? She TP's up for the ward, but yeah, like, the, she's the, off. they're definitely putting the PL in the mid. The ping is ping is uh, ping Vic is their mid player. Oh, sorry, Penguin. We gotta call him Penguin. Yeah, his, Penguin. his, na his name is Penguin, I believe. Penguin sick. It's kind of curious. They have four Danes and a Penguin. I just wonder how he, you know, how they know him and is, how is he it, got is it. Is it cold enough in uh, in Denmark to actually have like a penguin? Not really. It's pretty warm, especially now. <laughs> Obviously, I mean, that's, I, why, I that's why Sweden is far superior to Denmark. Nah, I'm practically Danish, Toby. Yeah, that's remember because that's you live in Skåne. Yeah. Yeah. Toby with the knowledge. Hey, I remember, bro. You you kind of made it so the entire world knew when you uh when you called an entire team by that name. Wait, she actually gets zero experience for a denied trend? Well, oh, yeah. I just lowered the experience from them. Uh, like the lane creeps, but it actually removes all the experience. Very nice. Just, uh, sorry, just nerding out about... That's fine, I'm nerding out about her black hair. Do you realize the contradiction going on right now, Valve? Yeah. Right, we'll, we'll get to it in a moment, because it looks like there's going to be a contest for the top room. We'll let the bottom one have its own little fun as solo. Well, I don't see you really having much of a contest here. That's a level one invoker. He's not doing Jack bottom lane. It's going to be PL and Spirit Breaker who actually get it. The timing of the charge from Hester Snag Joe actually snags the rune from Mag. <laughs> Mag doesn't want to uh, give this up though. He's going to make more trades and get. Oh no! If he got he, that, he couldn't get him. He couldn't get the block in time, and he only summoned one trait with his second one as well. 
it's gonna hurt him a little bit more in the laning phase, but it would have been amazing if he got first blood. Uh, he wouldn't have killed him in any way, he had to charge again, but he would have uh, forced, forced him to lose even more HP. This lane is dangerous as well, because there's boots on the Furion, right? So, mm -hmm. right here, he's trying to cancel the clarity, he realizes those trees can't allow them to spam up. Okay, to get back to the really, really important things here in Dota 2. Why does Crystal Maiden have black hair, but her portrait in both the top part of the board, the last hit is the nice thing, and also when you zoom in for perspective mode, it is just the basic Crystal Maiden default. Why is this the case? That is uh, a good question, please. Please. It's in the details. In the details. Hmm, that's terrible. God, no one's having a real hard time here, Amit. <laughs> he's already had to burn yes. every consumable he's got apart from the fairy fire. The upside well, is the fact that Ping is um, not having his bottle yet, but he's still got a salve on him. Exactly. When he gets that bottle, it's going to get even worse. And you just can't get more spam. And it's so hard to harass away a peal with poor man shooting on level 1. And even if he does harass him a lot now, he has a salve, nice. so... Solo prepared. kill? He could actually go for the Troll Trap into he the climb and do some considerable damage here. And this is the Ryan speciality. There's boots on the Night Stalker and he doesn't have boots himself, so he's going to just chill. And uh, CM is coming in for a frostbite here. She wants to steal the Hellbear. God, it's, it's the only thing he can do though. Like Hellbear is the only thing he can get. The troll's gonna time out. Yeah. Uh, but you, you remember, like obviously you've known Bryce for a very long time. Oh yeah. Uh, when he first came into Dota 2, one of his primary things he did it was always the Enchantress. It was always he didn't even start his own jungle. He started in the Dire jungle and then dove at around the two two and a half minute mark under the tier one tower safe lane of Dire side. That's the Danish way, actually. <laughs> he used to play like this a lot. Dota 1, Dota 2. Just adopt the same thing. It's interesting to see, uh, to see him play again. It's been a while since I saw him. He hasn't really been uh, in a top team. Like when, he, when, like when Dota 2 came out, he was part of like SK Gaming, I think, at that point. I mean, I mean Rise is like me. We, we don't roll in the top teams, dude. We just, <laughs> we just kind of trash. <laughs> But he's still cool to watch. This is like, okay, what team are we playing in? Well, I hear Pycat's making up a team, so maybe we should go and join that one. Yeah. Well, I love Rice. He's he's a really cool guy. He's got this uh, smile on his face always. He, yeah, he is one of the real positive guys out there. Yeah. Even like at LAN events, you know how things can get really bad in different lands. Mm -hmm. You know, different things don't go as they should, and teams can feel really miserable. And he would just be smiling anyway. So. Uh... Something. Oh, uh, the solo is trying to go for play. the interception play. Yeah, uh, he wanted to get the courier. Yeah, but the courier is not Sorry. moving. It's waiting until the three minute mark before it will come out. Yeah, they know. They saw the invis room but taken, so. Just gonna chill. And there's no stress for the PL. He's still farming. Look at it 15 for 4. He uh, doesn't really shut down the invoker though. The invoker is doing a really good job on this lane. No one is a quite stellar lane there. I'm kind of surprised that bottom lane is as close as it is. Like a Spirit Breaker up against a Nature's Prophet. Nature's Prophet's got a lot of harassment, even though Spirit Breaker is very tanky. It's close until the face boots come up on Mag, and it gets really hard. But that's also when the Spirit Breaker can leave the lane, because he should have level 6 soon. Yep. You know. And they just but... rotate Ace or Noya down, down south. Mm. Yep. Even a simple thing like an Enchantress moving down there. Like, Ryze is back now in his own jungle. But yeah. he is really underleveled at this point. For all his rotations, he he hasn't really gotten the hell of all. Oh, there's your top, top wow. first blood. I caught the that very kill. tail of that, but... Yeah, he traded hits a little bit too much, FN, and then suddenly he just died. And he has all his regen as well. He didn't use any tangle before when he was trading hits, so he could definitely have lived. He just needed to use the tangle during the fights. I think he underestimated the damage. It's Oracle. Not even about the Legion Commander, just Oracle. <laughs> Oracle does have an insane nukes. Yeah, long range as well. That's the thing. When you get Ether Lens on Oracle, you can just spam from so far away. And Speaking yeah, this... <laughs> of one of the greatest nukes. Yeah, goodbye FN. This could be another Ember Spirit game where it's like the saddest thing ever, just like our previous series. They were trying to help him, but they walked through worse. Well, they're coming so for Ace. Work. Noi is still or? here, however, and uh, now Prophet, yeah, they're going to bring four people in. Ace, they try and break him free, and uh, well, with that, oh, he's so actually done it with the overwhelming odds. There was something in Solo, oh, oh, oh. in too deep! You're next to the biggest nuker in the early stage of the game, the Oracle. And PL mid, just PL. Solo kills the Invoker as well. I say Solo kills, yeah, that Sadler arrived there like, like a minute ago and started just chipping away at the Invoker. Yeah. 
Wow. There's a lot of underestimating from Vega right now, I feel. I didn't think that they could die when they dive on top. The Invoker dying to solo PL almost. Of course, the help caller helped. Help caller. This is this is so like this is beyond terrible for them because the only thing they've got right now going for them is the Invoker CS. Like he is the top CS of a Vega at the moment. Yeah, but he died. Yeah, that, that makes it redundant. You have he top has, CS he has on lower your net team. worth than the Spirit Breaker at the moment. Exactly. Yeah, this could turn real ugly, and this is before Legion even has tools. Let's wait for her to get online and charge coming top lane. FN does not have spirits available because he's only a level four Ember Spirit, but you'll get a proper searing chain off on Hester, yeah. Joe, and Ace. Charger was through a ward, so he was able to get a good searing chain. Mid, Solo's trying making... to make a wraparound. Hey, they got an observer ward. Like, what are you? You no. <laughs> you don't kill a PL mid lane. Well, you gotta give it to uh, to Danish bears. They've had good wards in the right positions. Been uh, prepared for all these ganks. They put that observer ward down just uh, obviously after nighttime began. Yeah, but, like, you, they know you, that like, it should be focused. Solo ran to the off lane to start farming in his first nighttime phase. Like that <laughs> itself tells me that Vega is so far behind. Oh yeah. You never want to be farming during nighttime as Night Soccer. Preferably, you just want to be ganking non stop, but right now they're just too weak. And he needed levels because he didn't have any silence even when he went uh, behind the PL there mid. There was no way PL was gonna die. And she's just gonna go and take bottom, it seems. A little bit dangerous though. She doesn't have much HP. Charge on away. He has level 6. Yeah. That's the one. Uh, very, very bad. He can turn now. over to this uh, Furion. Wait. <laughs> he's... Uh, okay. We've now turned off. directions. <laughs> <laughs> Going this way. It's like he stopped a bit to uh, to realize that. And Mag's backing off that lane. Basically, Snowy doesn't want to get involved. And Ping just just he's, like, he's hands down won this lane against the Invoker. Played it really well, and he just chose the power. I mean, look, even the four spirits are not safe. Spirit lands twenty four seven. I don't even try to deny that one and failed. Yeah. We we have to look at the other timing as well for DB. So the PL, like, we're still seven minutes into the game. Keep We have to keep this in mind. We are yep. only seven minutes into the game. But PL is farming up nicely. You've got the duel, which is arriving shortly for a Legion commander. Uh, Noya's gotten a hell of a lot off this offlane. He's actually going to have Arcane Boots in in four seconds. And if he, go, if he walks up further, he would actually find Seema as well. Yeah, who was just sneaking around to put down a ward, the lane ward, and the ward was undetected even though they saw him. Ace, didn't get where you thought it went. <laughs> Bought a Quelling Blade, uh, and then realized he wasn't close enough to the side shop to pick it up. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna buy it now. Yeah. Um, this is hard laning phase for Vega. They gotta try to wrap around. This time no wards. Yeah, they but... need to go on the Oracle. Noya instantly actually fatigues himself. Mag's gonna run in, but Hester Joe has already arrived. Eight locked inside that sprout. He needs to run himself out of here with the overwhelming odds. He's got the ability oh, wow. to do so. And the movement from TP. They brought all five heroes up. Charged up for cooldown in one second time. They the vision over on Mag. He's back behind the T1 tower, but they go for Solo instead. The oh, Observer so is still sitting on top of that hillside. They'll enchant and slow him down, and Oracle will kill Secure with the nuke. These turnarounds. Actually, it's a pretty strong lane. I didn't think about it much uh, when they put it, but the Oracle and Legion Commander, you can't really go on any of them. They have Purge, you know, for either of them. Just press the attack. Of course, the Fortress End can remove Frostbite and something. But it's just uh, it's a hard lane to initiate on. If you go on the Oracle first, he's always going to get saved. Well, that backfired pretty hard. 5 and all now. Yeah. The only upside for Vega was the fact there was no duel available during that fight, or else Ace would be looking at plus damage in the moment. And so they just take out that top tower, Vega get as much as they can of anything else, which is push the Ember to bottom lane and start farming. Mad Ghost, the Radiant Jungle. But they know they've lost this top tower now. And if they give the last hit, actually, do they give the last, they're giving the last hit to Ace? Get that Blink Dagger online a little bit earlier? Uh, they should. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh... Peel. Uh, we'll see if he goes for a travels first, which is the most normal build. On the peel. He might sense. go for some like drums as well, but uh, I think he just goes travels. Having this good of a game. 
We still have to remember the PLs going up against Nature's Prophet, so they exactly. need something to deal with the split push beyond that of the Spirit Breaker charge. Yeah, if they have a natural solution, then it's just gonna be really nice. Yep. Right now, I don't see what Vega are trying for. They're just moving across the map, but there's no objective being taken. They're just kind of mindlessly roaming. A space for no one to win the game with uh, yeah. OP Invoker. That's kind of it. The mag to create space with split uh -huh. push. Solo oh, to die to on top lane. Is, uh, oh, he got the silence off. So Ace can't duel him. And Solo, is he looking to have a play at this? Mag, let's run the major go. This will bounce through, but it doesn't actually reach to Ace and Noya. It got soaked up by the creep waves, and on bottom lane, Hester Joe, uh, he's got no extra help. Yeah, he could have Oracle ulted immediately when the silence came out. Purchase as well. He has two different ways to remove silence. Of course, he used the Q to stall already. Oh, Noya? Yeah, he's Walking very into visible. dangerous. But Ace is also here. Well, Ace is there. Yeah. How do you kill? No one. Noya? Oh, he didn't. There's no press the attack, it's on cooldown. Yeah, he used it to farm creeps actually. Okay, that's not good because it's level one. It doesn't really help him farm creeps at all. That's like watching an OD use imprisonment to farm. Yeah, which is fine if there's someone to try and deny you. That's a good jump from FM. Double searing chains, ping back. Can't get himself nice out. So, uh, Seema with the frostbite control was also working beautifully. That's a big one too for the Ember Spirit to grab 400 gold this early on for just one kill. Yeah, that's that's really sweet for him. So, two big pickoffs. Still, still the CS is pretty okay for Vega, even though they're falling behind in terms of just map control and so on. Everyone is farming so well in this game. All the top seven have at least 40 CS. That's kind of sick for a game of Dota in seven minutes. The only one who doesn't have a lot more is Oracle, but <laughs> it's an Oracle. Yeah. He'll get his farm in later with spam. He'll be fine. He doesn't really need to get CS. He'll could take part of the kills. Mm. So PL died before he could finish the travels as well. That sets him back a little bit. But the Blink Dagger is online. It was scouted by the ward on top. So they ping him. They know he has Blink. That's a little bit sad, because normally when you get the Blink Dagger, you want to go for the surprise factor. You just get one duel off at least. I smoke out to try and get the... Uh, in here. Bottom tower is under oh, we gotta get close enough. We're close enough against the hero with a blink dagger. You reveal yourself, Ace. He yeah. definitely saw them. <laughs> yeah, that's that's hard. Even though they know exactly where he is, it's a hard gank to land. Like Charge coming to FN. It's got Spirit. He's just gonna slide a fist and then Searing Chain and Spirit away. Yeah, the observe wall which let him know. But bottom lane where uh, Penguin again being initiated on, he'll doppelganger out. Wrath of yeah, Nature goes turn. off, and Mag kind of in the middle of a whole bunch of PLs they did not want to be in. Um, this fight, Danish Bears, they're trying to take it. They're moving the Legion Commanders as well down. So I think Radiant's Vega might just have to give up this tower. I don't know how they're going to fight this. So yeah, they're probably just going to scramble and put more pressure top. I think Seema can just go up and even nuke this. And a quick pause from Vega. So yeah, she have like Seema like take out the creep wave. He needs another one though. Like it's on the way, but there's no catapult behind it. Like the amount of damage he'll do to the T1 tower will be negative. He's not gonna get the tower, but maybe Furin can TP in and you know, five seconds he has it available and then he can just help push that tower. Yeah, that's true. Because what's, what's what's DB gonna do? They can't TP the Legion Commander back. Well, exactly. It's gonna be hard for him at least. They might set up with a charge first and then TP someone when Spirit Breaker is close, but that's all across the map. So they should be able to get out safely before that. Here and does TP top. Meanwhile, I think the rest of them just go jungle. I think Night Stalker should finish the, um, the item that Moon, Moon Meander hates. Go for Iron Talon, man. Dude, it's so good. It's actually broken. That's why he hates it, right? So. Yeah. As he said in the cast before, it's like he just hates the item because it's uh, it's the way that no skill players can win a lane. Yeah. Uh, not even a lane. Well, on the off lane, yes. But it's just. You can farm so fast by just heading into jungle. You don't win your lane, but you get farmed. And yeah, they, they still cannot keep up with the, the rate of income of DB. Like DB, they were actually 4k gold ahead at one point. Slowly Vega brought this back to 2k, and they're actually ahead in experience at the moment. But if DB keep taking out these these towers without any kind of contest from Vega, DB will own this map soon. They're gonna yeah. lose their T1 tower on top lane. Uh, DB can't stop this, they're gonna be too late for it, but you get a tier 1 and probably a tier 2 tower for it. 
and you still want to use the Blink Dagger of the Legion. And the only way you can force Vega to fight you is to, well, put their home in trouble. <laughs> That's basically all. Oh, you can can do. try some um, smoke gang as well with Legion Commander, like Legion and even Enchantress with their impetus to go together and just find something. But right now I think it's the right mentality, just take towers, take control of the map. Be surprised to see them go all the way top as well now. That Observer Ward they have placed up there, they understand what's around. And the Prophet went back and okay, now Night Stalker is also retreating with them. Yeah, this game... They are trying to play a slow game here, because they know right now they're so much weaker. They need to just farm. They have good CS on their supports, I mean, 51 total CS on their... And evenly spread out, too. How fast is the DB lineup for taking more Sean? Oh, uh, it's not good. Until Legion Commander gets really farmed, it's pretty terrible. Mm. I mean, they have Enchantress to tank it, but who's gonna kill it? He kill is quite bad. FN. Okay. Spirit, so Wayne has to realize that spirit is very, very defensive. That's behind yeah. the tier 2 tower in mid. Uh, always, always got a spirit back, and there's not enough stunts on DV to really punish it. Even the blink dagger from Legion Commander, I mean, it takes a while to cast the jewel, so Radiant he should always be pretty safe on FN. He has his travels as well, so he can keep forcing aggressive uh, spirit push. It really feels like more of a game of like fire and maneuver, fire and maneuver. Oh yeah. But it's gonna be a lot harder once that diffuser blade is up for the PL. Then there's then there's not much escape for a lot of these heroes who rely on movement speed or some heroes who have no movement speed looking at Seema. Yeah. And he's just 950 gold away from it. And uh, even if you ever find the Ember not having a spirit up at the moment and you just defuse him, he can't actually send out a new illusion or um, remnant, right? <laughs> Gets so slow. Um, but yeah, farming game for now. I wonder what Legion Commander is gonna go for next item. I mean, he could always just go for something like EKB if he wants to, but I think. I'd almost like to see something it's where it's like more of a push and damage thing, like Maelstrom or Desolator. Yeah. Like, Desolator would Blade give you like, quicker options. Oh, yeah, Blade would be nice considering there's no BKB here as apart from Invoke, but that's later on. I think he could go blade mail Deso, or he could go for something like Shadow Blade if he really wants to find these these kills. But uh, wow, a lot of words being smacked down here by Sima. They want Roche control. It you know, always feels it weird though when you get a Shadow Blade on Legion, as, no, well, as well as a Blink Dagger. I, I know Squindles was trying to convince me of this in uh, in Croatia. Where he's like, it's it's fine, man, because what I want to do is I want to initiate with my Shadow Blade, Dude, and then the I blink same... away with my Blink Dagger. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. That's not the reason. <laughs> that's not why. <laughs> it, it, the reason is the same. If you ever watch Arise play Magnus, right? He loves to go for Shadow Blade, Force Staff, and Blink Dagger. And that looks really stupid, because yeah, why do you need all this? But it's just you can initiate from so far away. That's exactly a power. So you can sneak in with Shadow Blade, get unnoticed, and then blink in and just catch someone. That's the power you get. Is it this but, I'm, I'm gonna save Swindles and say, I think I must have just misunderstood what he said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I'm sure he said that. But we... <laughs> Sounds like something he, he would said take. So He said something similar, but probably not uh, the same. Uh, Swindles can take it. He really can. Like that's... Well, until he, until he gets fully triggered. And yeah. Then he's in trouble. Uh, mid tier 2 tower is going to drop. Vega again, Dyer's not looking to fight at all. Bag's still going for a full split push, but he's building Maelstrom over on this prophet after he got phased as well as drums. Yeah. The he's Ember's to... keeping the side lanes going at least. I have to keep increasing the DPS. They're going to have to take a fight sooner or later. <laughs> he knows this. If he can get Maelstrom and BKB, then he can actually fight. Until then, this is looking grim. Spirit Breaker Charge is going for Mag, and he's seeping straight back to base. How many times are we going to see this cow just charge somewhere and then do a full 180 turn? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. Like, if you're a DB fan, you should be completely okay with that. Because it means that the Mag is not keeping his presence on the lane. True. And now Ping went, like, his Diffuser Blade is done. But these fights are going to get so much more complicated if Vega tries to take it. So, okay, let's, let's look at it from a different angle. We're talking about, like, the split push game, which Vega is doing quite well. At which point can they actually contest or go into a fight? Like oh, I said, if they're forced into it with the duel, the Emperor Spirit didn't actually win the duel, but they'll still take out the two heroes, and that's a win in itself. That split second CM ulti, though, instantly ending. Yeah, that's uh, not a win on the duel, but they got the kill. 
So still, 19 minutes, no deal damage, but a big pick off. They're gonna try for Roche now. Yeah, they got the full blade melt done for race. Yep. They have a lot of key items coming up now. Ether Lens is done on the uh, Oracle whenever he wants to buy it. The BKB builds on Spearbreaker. Dear God, he's far. What? Wait, he got a full BKB? Okay. <laughs> 800 gold away. The sustain of this DB lineup is also kind of ridiculous. Yeah, and they are adding an urn now on enchanters as well. Oh, they just profits bringing over one train. No one's going to take care of it. Making more trains, but there's no one coming in from Vega. So you can say we goodbye to Roshan, Aegis into the hands of PL, and then he instantly BTs towards the top lane. Start of fist point hit him, he goes on FN, burning off that mana. Yeah, but I like okay. how FN just stays and keeps farming a little bit more. He's like, nah, I need to get this last creep because you can't you can't burn my mana fast enough. Yeah, he had a spirit back in the well. He's going to instantly regenerate anyway, so hey. Yeah, it's just good presence of mind, you know. He knows that he has enough mana to stay a little bit longer. And there's really not good disables at all on DB. At some point, I'm looking... If this game goes really late, they need to add some, some items to control the Ember and Invoker, like Hex. <laughs> But look at the look at the way the game is going. The net worth lead is definitely for for Team DB. They're winning the kills. They've taken towers and so on. But look how much experience Vega have. They're actually a, ahead by quite a lot in terms of experience. Cause they're split pushing so much. Hmm? This is very curious to see. It's quite seldom you see uh, experience and net worth be so different. Just because TB have been grouped up as five so much that they they're not getting as yep. much out of the map as Vega do when they do their full split push. But the the downside is like. You're still on Vega, you've got a Crystal Maid that doesn't really achieve much, and you've got a nice Stalker who's trying to scramble himself forward to get that Agadim Scepter, create Vision. Because once, yes. at least once the Vision is up, then they can deal more with the Legion and the Spirit Breaker initiation. But getting to that point when the Prophet and the Ember Spirit keep pushing out the lanes, these other supports and core is just, there's going to be no money. Yeah, it's, it's hard. It's definitely hard. I mean, they can they can be fine with CM having CM having no items as long as Night Stalker finishes up the Agonims, because then they have the control to just play around the opponents or even take the fights with uh, with the vision first. They can maybe get the initiation. Question is, the five v five, who do you initiate on? There's so many ways for the initiation to go wrong. You have the Prestiac who could save anyone from pretty much anything. Yep. And yep. of course, PL is the elusive hero. You have the Oracle oh, who can save people. Yep. So you pretty much have to go on Oracle, but then Legion Commander's gotta save Oracle. It's a terrible, terrible team fight to take. I'm interested and to see where, uh, like, I'm mean, assuming Mana Style's obviously gonna be the next course of action too from the PL. Oh yeah. I mean, maybe you could skip it against the Battle Fury Ember, but I still think it's worth getting it. Just because he's up against a Night Stalker is where my brain's going. Yeah. I mean, that and even the... Frostbite as well, so you have good reasons to do it. And Searing Chains. So many things you can break with the Manta style. Yeah. Oh yeah, you should definitely still go it. Looking over to Vega, they have Aghanims, Midas, and Drums on Invoker. 21 minutes, he's looking pretty farmed. And uh, I think sadly this farm is just gonna be used to split push more. This game might be really slow actually until the final high ground push. Nine kills in 21 minutes, I don't know what you're talking about Waga. This game is fast, <laughs> this is lightning. Oh, we see a smoke gang. Might see a pickoff here again. Legion Commander, are you going to get your first dual damage? Oh, he will. Look at the vision. Yeah, Solo's out too far. He walks straight underneath the Radiant Observer Wall. So well, here comes oh, your charge. charge. And now Ace, press the attack, jump in, bring his blade now. And they bash him twice as well. Legion will still yeah. get the 10 damage for the kill. Radiant's he has been slain. He has. Meanwhile, a lot of split pushing top Dying by PL as well. Pingwing Tech, healing damage to his tower. And that's a big wave on the bottom lane attacking into the tier 2 tower. Yeah, so I think Jiren could be more aggressive, but he's so scared. I mean, if you're against the Legion and uh, Spearbreaker, dangerous to push here. So they just TP him back. Why, why lose the tower anyway? You don't need to. So don't yep. take the risk. Middle lane, uh, FN. Mass gonna TP over Ace. He does not have duel, but he has pressed the attack and extra help to keep Hestichiro alive. Yeah, no one has a haste here. Ah, uh, they're still not gonna fight. It's just more... It's the correct decision. I mean, for Vega, they just have to play the recovery game. Okay, Pink's banking a little bit too much gold for me to think it's still a mana staff. Uh, I mean, there are more items you could go. You could definitely go for a Missile Blade quite early, if you're against Ember. As I said, they need more lockdown. 
I still think he's gonna go for one more item before he adds anything like that. And Blink Dagger is also a tremendous uh, item for PL in team fights. Blinking and chasing people. Uh, he goes for the Yasha, so he's yeah. definitely gonna go for it. And there's gonna be the Manta. Let's just like toss you up. I was like, does Radiance work in this game? <laughs> nah, no, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> Good old Radiance Day, PL, those days are over. The illusions don't last long enough now. And one of these days is coming back though. Armored on any of these melee heroes, which are starting to get more and more, like, well, at least showtime in Dota 2. Yeah. So an armor for a Legion commander. Hmm. Yeah, it's a strong item. I mean, it's all about winning duel for him, right? So all he needs to do is have the armor active during that time. He'll be fine. And also, I don't know. Oh, he dropped. This... He dropped the calling blade. Game is over. Oh no. Furion will take control now. <laughs> Perma sprouted like her TZ. <laughs> the Octarine going. Yeah. Colin's got that extra money, which actually Mag's got a decent amount. He's almost got the same net worth as the Legion Commander at this point of the game. I wonder if he's actually gonna go Aghanims or if he's gonna go BKB. I mean, BKB is if you ever expect to fight here. Aghanims if you just want to keep doing what you're doing right now. Ben running into Peel. Both of them can't do anything to the other. They can both say hello to each other. They can both some mana. Ah. Peel way to say hello. Take your mana. Joe, you're not gonna reach that in time. But back to the daytime. The solo is getting closer and closer towards this Aghanim scepter. Yeah, and Blink Dagger now on on no one. So maybe they're looking to take a fight or initiate some way. Or it could just be more aggressive split pushing and blinking out and teeping. Who knows? Totally. That is that's a very, very defensive ghost walk. Yeah. He's he's still I mean, walking around right Level one as well. I, I don't <laughs> Level one ghost walk? It's not very fast. Wait, oh he's is, gonna run is, into is him. he actually breaks the smoke? Oh they have a gem. They have, they a, have gem. a gem, they have a oh, gem over on hey, No one! Oh, the dream is definitely not real. <laughs> I don't know. He's Fair trying point. to be sneaky with his ghost walk, but... Uh, it doesn't work. Penguin. Oh, he does so much damage. Oh, the Furion? What are you doing? Okay. Uh... He cheeks into a PL with Manta to Fusil on his own. Has RTK come to Russia? Yep. That's how RTK moved. Oh. Oh. Tried and tested. Now the tier 3 tower is toast, they got no buyback on the Prophet either, or the Invoker, because oh, the Blink Daggers were first just on both of them. The Ember Spirit at least picks up his Battle Fury now. Oh, so he's got some good clearance, but if he gets caught out, like that Nether Strike is up from Hester Joe. Like, they could just give him a crack. Ace is dropping lower. Remember, he still got the Almond, however, and Duel is available. And Melorex is gone. Okay. Oh, yo, might go down here? He's dead. Joe charges in though, with his BKB up. Yellow on the sidelines, and uh, now the duel is over on the Nine Stalker. He just got his Aghanim Scepter as well. F to the front line, so it's me off target. As Rise protected up by Noya. It's a weird fight. It really is. It's it's kind of all over the shop. It's over committal now. As Vega have come back, they had no buybacks in order to do this as well. It was just well, simple respawning. They might lose more here. The blink on Invoker almost up. They should be getting the enchantress. Wow, that's smart by Ryze. He actually gave the gem over to the Legion Commander, who was going to 100% be able to TP out of that. So they keep that's the gem really alive. Nice. Uh, that's a nice little touch. But the big part about this fight, I feel, is that Danish Bears, they could have gone out after taking Rex. The peel was dead, but then they charged in and start taking the fights. I think they just had to scramble. Of course, they would lose some people against this Invoker Emperor, but... I think they could have gone away with less losses. Yeah. At the end of the day, now Rexes are down at least, but I look at the uh, yes. Vegas. Look at Vegas' position now. They have just won a team fight after being behind so much the entire game. Yep. This could actually turn. They get items on all their heroes. Like the Aghanim Scepter, yeah, nice look, it died. It, it happens, but he already got the Aghanim before the fight. You get an Eat the Lens over on a Crystal Maiden. Funny, because I wasn't thinking that she was going to go for that. I thought she was going to look for something more like a Yule Scepter to try and interrupt the Legion Commander's duel, or... Mm. That kind of jazz, but... Okay. Or, or even Glimmer Cape would have... Well, she's up against the gem, obviously not as great. Yeah... I guess she just wants to stay at a safe distance and keep throwing her spells, because getting close to this fight... I mean, look at the heroes. Crystal Maiden against PL, Legion Commander, and Spirit Breaker? This is a sad time. Yeah. So, I kind of... kind of get behind this. I think Soima is doing a good choice here. Well, 
Another pause? Uh, pause. A lot of pauses. If this uh, Oracle ever gets to our Guardian Greaves, I think the game should almost be over just by that. Such a strong item. He's going for the mech next. He closing up. Of course, he went for um, mana boost after the Ether Lens, though. So he's really greedy on the mana. Mm -hmm. It still feels like Vega falling. Like I say, they it feels like they're falling behind. But then I look at the graph and see that they're actually 5k experience in front because of DB's overextension inside the base just then. They've lost about 4,000 worth of experience advantage that they had. Yeah, and, and even, even in gold, like right now, it's actually Vega who have more gold. Yeah, the funny part is, when you run together as five this much, you fall behind a lot in terms of experience. Looking at the Oracle, he's level 10, they're level 11 Enchantress, 11 Spirit Breaker. Even Crystal Maiden is level 12. So, they're just being out-leveled in that department. And Invoker, when they get some levels, I mean, he's level 16 with Aghanims right now. That's when he can really turn down the team fights. Sadly, he didn't get to take a fight with his Arcane Rune. That would have been the dream. 0.4 second CD Invoke. Um, they are just grouping up, though. Danish Bears. I don't think they're going to stop playing as five. As long as they can keep taking out Rax, this is fine. Everything that goes towards the, the end goal of... I don't actually know if Megas aren't even enough, are they? Um... Well, it's, it's definitely it, in help. the extension, it becomes enough. I don't think you automatically win just because you have Megas, but when you have Megas, you just go as five and push into the enemy, and the Mega Creeps will kind of secure you that win. New fight, but uh, we're still a long way from that. It's going to be a lot of Rogue's control when he comes back up. I think Vega can contest that quite easily. They have Gem and Aghanims and Night Stalker. All these words you see right now by Danish Bear should be D-word very soon. And when that vision is gone, maybe Vega can make a play. I never realized that this Ember Spirits animation looks so awesome. There are two rings of fire with a bubble. <laughs> uh, but it's also the way like his hands have gone back with the double rapiers. Yeah. It's, it's like the ultimate flip off. Wait, there's a rapier on the ground as well. Is it just reflection or something? What? It's gotta be a reflection. I don't see a rapier on the ground. That's funny. <laughs> I, see, I see a rapier on the ground, dude. Whereabouts? I mean, right underneath the ember, between them. There's a rapier between his legs, Toby. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a reflection. <laughs> when you look at it from a, from a specific angle, it's... Wow, the older client so strong. It's, it's, um, it must be like, um... Patience. So what the actually... is it reflecting? There's no rapier straight up, you know? It, yeah, it yeah, is. There, yeah, there is. Yeah, there is, huh? Well, it's, it doesn't look like it's between his legs for me. It looks like it's actually a little bit off to the side. So it looks like a, it's a pool reflection a little bit further down. Oh, it's good. It's good that we get pauses, you know, it gives us time to analyze these things that hey, no dude. one else would talk about. Dude, this is the kind of stuff, like... We even Someone should make a collection. I, I don't know if anyone ever watched that, that cast that Cinder and I did at the Shanghai Major. Like, obviously everything was going wrong and we were on the second stream. But we had ourselves, what was a 35-minute a pause or something like that? It was ridiculously long. There were some pauses in Major, yeah? Yeah, just, just a couple of things went possibly wrong. Uh, yeah, we, we worked out uh, the critical things. Uh, for anyone who never actually watched I really hope someone actually highlights the cool stuff that we said. Uh, we were trying to work out what neutral creeps would actually make the best soup. Okay. Oh yeah, I watched that actually. I watched it live. <laughs> And the oh. uh, and the vegetarian black dragon, mm -hmm. because he was the, uh, he was munching on a tree. I think someone mentioned the hellbear tomato soup or something. Yeah, yeah. The, the hellbear was gonna be good, but I thought she thought you need the tang that came out from the purge satter. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Someone should make a compilation just out of all the stupid things that have been said by different commentators during pauses in Dota. Just make a long like ten hour clip. Uh, Great. You could easily get 10 hours worth of material, but you'd have to track oh. down so that, much. That's just a major. Yes. <laughs> per major, you get 10 hours. Uh, just Actually, play... Frankfurt major had no issues from a viewer perspective. It was really yeah. good. Frankfurt major actually went fairly smoothly overall. Yeah. Like, there, there, was, there, was, there was a gonna... couple of uh, unfortunate seven minute of silence that didn't go quite right. Uh... There was a couple of those moments. Beyond that, though, everything seemed to be okay. Once, once, yeah. once production was fine. 
<laughs> I, just, I just put the two of those together. The, like, the whole production team was fired in Shanghai. Yeah. But at, at the Frankfurt Major, the guy who was leading the production team was fired. They, they fired production there as well? Oh dear God. It was, it was just Whoever a... is production for Manila Major, look out, dude. <laughs> it was just the guy who was leading it. But it just escalated, so it's like one person gets fired in Frankfurt. Uh, the entire production team in China gets fired. What, what happens next? Major, we, fi chat will we, be fired? we fire venue. We fire venue. The venue, <laughs> like, we just get a whole different location. We'll fire have, the we'll have um, Dota in the park. That's what we'll do. It'll be like the first ever LCS finals, where they didn't realize the sun was going to blind the players. Um, and they couldn't actually see their screens because of the way the sun was also setting. It would kick into like this sound shell thing they were using. Um, yeah, and uh, the players couldn't actually see their screens. They had to set up like huge tents and umbrellas on the sides of the stage so oh, yeah. the players could actually see what was going on. I remember on. hearing about that. Yeah, the sun glare is yeah. a great thing. That, that, that was around the same time as everyone was like, man, like, eSports has to be so much more professional. Gotta step up the mark right there. LCS, right, don't know anything as they come and run this kind of thing. And it was around the same time as uh, S2 were also doing their basketball court scene, uh, mm -hmm. which to this day is still probably one of the What's funniest the intros ever. to make eSports happen outside? What the hell? Do they not know that the sun is outside? Actually, well, think about it, man. Frankfurt. Like you look at all the other, all the other tournaments which happen um, indoors, and you have like all obviously all the lights off, and you can do like your perfect lighting uh, lighting things. But uh, ESL One Frankfurt like, at uh, Commerce Bank Arena, it's done during the daytime, and it's done during summertime in Germany. Which Where it's is... done in a nice way. They have the scene set up in a way that the players don't have any of these yeah. issues. Yeah, because they actually make up boxes, so the players yeah. don't have the problems. But it was still bloody cold on the first day. Like, VP I... actually had to it train outside. It was raining. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it was raining. Like, it's also the other problem, because uh, some stupid dick put a crane through the roof. Like, <laughs> like, it... Oh yeah, I remember this. Yeah, they, they cut the top, so... Like, I remember James Lampke was like, Oh shit! Like we have to find tents for every single box area. <laughs> it wasn't the plan. They actually, I think they actually redesigned their stage for that. Meanwhile, pause is over. Uh, because of nighttime and because darkness is triggered, they just ran straight past <laughs> FM. But oh, Ace! Yeah. I mean, he, he jumped away before the animation yeah. started for duels, so he's fine. It's just how it started. It looks. It, it was ships in the night because of the darkness. Yeah, it looks kind of scary running into a legion around the corner like that. Oh, well, the wards are starting to be removed, but they still have a good ward inside Vegas base here. Nice stuff if it needs to get on this. I actually reveal the fact that no one came out to. He's got his blink dagger available, and with without the cover of uh, smoke, they can't reach the invoker before he can react. And if I deal blink out and TP. Oh, so sneaky. Yeah, they still want to have a look just in case he hung around. But, like, DB doesn't want to push in through top. You get a range racks, like what did he do? You're like currently you're losing your bottom lane because Mag is pushing that out, and your middle lane is about to have its tier two tower Honestly, under siege. This is very game losing what DB are doing right now. They can't push up here anyway. They need to split out, start getting farm, and just you know get some way to secure Roshan and take control of this area of the map. Because right now they're just moving around, not doing anything, and Furin is just farming. But when the items come up, I think Vega can easily turn this game around. Actually, they're far ahead now in terms of both net worth and, and yeah. experience. Yeah, th there's nothing to turn around. It's just they have to maintain what they're doing. They have to stay away from DB's gank squads. Well, they are working one racks down, so that's always a little bit difficult. But I think they have the tools to deal with uh, DB right now. I think DB's also going to slip. Like, okay, the Invis rune on Legion Commander. Yeah, oh, yeah. full timeout, but it's... There's so much of Vega up here. Like the Observer Wards that maybe oh, Ace can blink and duel. CM. Uh, Seema. It was really nice knowing you, bro. Oh, no. Really nice knowing you, bro. <laughs> you get... He was like, let me run down here and TP. <laughs> <laughs> he might have thought there was like an Observer Ward, like a little bit further north, uh, that was revealing his position, maybe. Yeah. That, that, that could have been it. Uh, that's just unfortunate. Oh, mid? They're actually charging? Mag? Yeah. Did I get a blink? Nope. 
This is this is where Vega can lose control. Oh, the bash. Yeah, he was dead anyway. Yeah, Ryze was coming up behind. And that's before Roshan. Two pickoffs and Roshan spawned. Yeah. That was terrible for Vega. The, well, what was what was the word we said? Like they have to hold. They need to maintain what they currently got. This is this is the way to we'll lose, lose baby. what you currently got. <laughs> they had a 7.5k experience advantage just before those last two picks had happened. Actually, no, that was even before all the other fights. Yeah, tower, tower, thing, thing, thing. Invoker, tornado up. Yeah, yeah this is taking them fine. such a long time to do Roshan. Prophet's gonna be alive in 20 seconds. They have a pretty bad lineup for it, but I think I get him in the end. And uh, they have a Vladimir's coming up on the Spirit Breaker, so that's gonna make their five man stronger. I like this item. Just a smart item pick up here. I really need to finish this game though. Like, the yeah. longer this game is dragging on, like the more powerful this Invoker is starting to become. Like, he's the second oh. highest net worth on the field, but also the Ember Spirit is reaching a point where his damage. Like it's it's going to get pretty brutal against DB, and it'll be amplified by PL, who can't really control his illusions that way. Yeah, definitely. I think, as you say, they need to close out the game, and the way to do it right now is finish the lads, finish the mech, and then just go. You know, these are two great five-man items. They have the Aegis online as well, so they can just go together with these items and try to pay, make a high ground push bottom. They already took the top rack, so... They'll have a BKB up in uh, now, uh, over on Ace. They actually got a Reaver as well, so okay, so they're building hard on PL. They got the BKB over on over on the Legion. Mag is feeling a little bit choked out in his own side of the map, so he's now cliff farming up the radiant side. Good old cliff farming, why not? You know, he's getting good money here. <laughs> they're starting to charge. And who do they get a vision on? It's over on uh, the Invoker. Invoker. So Hester oh, Joe's coming in. Safe. This timing is gonna be so close. Uh, that was that was nice. Getting out again. No one has really dodged a lot of bullets, even though it's 0, 2, and 4. He has really avoided a lot of these ganks. Nice talker. He wants the courier. Look for it. Courier snipe. I'm watching it. It's got the bottle on it. Oh, side. Oh. Solo is so happy right now. Radiant As the attack, my bomb. And then straight TP out. As the Joe was thinking about having a, a nether strike, but he is too far away. Yep. Not gonna get it. That's a good little pick off as well. It's, mm. it's delaying there time. Was some item. Like, DB keeps looking behind themselves when they got Nagus the Immortal. They want to push the bloody lane, but Prophet also starts creep skipping with Mjolnir. Yeah, but it's gonna be hard to split push now because the pressure is really being applied. He has to go top, but it's so dangerous to do it. He's gonna try. Even if they just get the tier 2 tower as a trade off, which with a decent army coming down, if he has some trains to it, they'll get it. Oh, yeah, if the they, if they can repel Vega, they get something out of this. He should get that tower. Question is, can they hold? Invoker needs to make a big play. Ember is quite farmed though. He has Battle Fury and crits. But he might be able to do this. It's that BKB from Ace. Like his movement in this. We'll see how effective it is. He needs an opening target. Getting hit by Nova doesn't really help Mob. He'll press the attack into the tree line. Now, oh, there it is. Blink, jump forward. He didn't BKP at this point, but they may have enough damage to kill off the Invoker. They will. The winner is there. The buyback threw away. Sifa gets destroyed. The BKB to allow Hester Joe and Ace to walk quite freely. Yeah. They get the two hero pickoffs. The buyback comes out. Still have Aegis as well on Invoker. Or on PL. On PL. But they, they made us back out of this. PL, he doesn't have the courier, so we can't bring out the heart. And he bought a heart rest, and he has enough money to finish the whole thing. If he could actually yeah, back up and reset. regenerate and just go in, I saw oh, they got Noia, don't they? Yeah, they mind. have they have Oracle, so just backing and healing with him, then they can regal. But they could also just back all the way if they wanted to. Uh, okay. Got charged top, so they're definitely getting out. He heals himself mid though. So there's, the yeah, there's two dire observers that watch his movement here. <laughs> in a row as well. It's like you would have to play with your nice close to fail. Ace was oh, coming in again. Ace. Does not have his BKB, but Pink throws out Lancers. Max is going to come to join the fight. He isolates Neuer inside the front. Ace actually going to be pushed away. He's still got this dual of Marble. He's got Blink up as well. He has He's in kill. the trees. Just go and scrap one of them. The Aegis is going to trigger, and he wants the Ember Spirit. He was holding on to that. He didn't just want damage. 
He wanted a big kill, and they're gonna go further. Chasing up after Mag, has to do this. BKP's come back off cooldown again for him, and they actually call it. Uh, GG, well played. They didn't have buyback over on the Ember Spirit. They just didn't actually have really anything to defend this again. Yep. Uh, that was really nice. That's one of those great combos as well. Work ulti onto Legion Commander. The Blink Dagger doesn't get cancelled because you're not taking damage. So you can just hold your Blink Dagger and run straight through a team fight and just blink to whoever you want. So, pretty insane. Solid game for Danish Bears. They'll take game number one and uh, their path back to the winner's bracket. While it will be a lot longer, they're in the lower. Uh, we'll have to